Hello and welcome to the Crafty Little Rat podcast episode 7. Um, I don't know whether you can tell, but I'm a little bit bunged up today, so it might be a bit fast and loose. Uh, show notes, maybe, maybe not. We'll see when we get there, shall we? Um, so, before I go any further, my name is Hannah. I'm Crafty Little Rat on Facebook. Uh, Crafty Little Rat Creations on Facebook, I should say. Uh, Crafty Little Rat on Instagram and on Ravelry. At some point, I will set up an Ravelry group. Uh, might not be before Christmas, but hey, who knows, we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me, I might be doing that quite a bit today. Um, so, normally, podcasting while poorly, I know, is a big no-no. I've only got a cold. It's not you know the end of the world um it's annoying certainly uh but i can survive um but i've got so much to show you guys um i've amassed quite a bit uh, it's been three weeks since i last podcasted because i've been so busy um i normally on a two-week schedule if you're a new viewer if you're a new viewer thank you for checking me out if um you have, have come back again to see me rambling then i'm even more impressed to be honest um so yeah, it's been three weeks. I'm poorly. I've had a cold. Came down at sort of Thursday night. Um, yeah, I know. I look awful. I'm like spot central. The giant one on this cheek. I mean, look at that. That's, it's impressive. I mean, it's awful, but it's impressive. Um, I went out for a works Christmas do on Friday, even though I was really poorly. Managed to sort of survive through it. So um, I thought today, which is Sunday the 6th of December, I'd want to sort of come on and show you guys some stuff that I've been working on and stuff that I have uh, done and stuff that I have um, bought, mostly stuff I've bought. There's a lot in the ooh, shiny section today. Um, so I apologise if I'm rambly and I apologise if it's a bit off piste. Um, I wanted to record because next weekend i'm busy um i'm out with my in-laws on the saturday we're doing early christmas uh we're going to cardiff uh which is nice i'm uh currently in newport in south wales uh i should also really say um my other half is from newport and his family live here and so we moved down for work i'm originally from lincolnshire which is in sort of the north uh northeast and depending on who you talk to, some people dispute the claim that I'm northern. Down here, I am definitely classed as northern. Uh, the more north you get, the less people think of me as northern, the more people think of me as Midlands. So, really rambly, Hannah. I mean, come on. Um, cold and flu meds are wonderful things and are kicking in. Um, okay, so, right, knitting-y bits, I suppose, first of all. Um, so, we're going to have what you're working on. I'm only working on two things at the moment mainly because I am taking part in the Canadian Knitter uh, Winter Camp that starts on the 1st of January. Um, I've applied, I've yet to be sorted into a house because a lot of people don't, but the aim is that uh, it's a bit like the sort of the O-loops, is it O-loops? Somebody does a Harry Potter along and uh, there's all sorts of uh, similar sort of a competitions. Uh, the pink skin stash down was a one recently i think um so basically you compete you knit things you get points for things that you knit uh you get more points if it's like in a thinner yarn uh, for every 50 grams of yarn you use you get so many points uh so yeah so i'm really looking forward to that but everything has to be cast on or not cast on until the 31st of december works in progress do not count which is fine and i completely and utterly understand why because you could have a lace weight shawl which is worth a lot of points you could have say a 200 gram lace weight shawl very near completion and then just you know leave it from now and finish it off in january the second and then be like oh yeah i've done this give me you know two three hundred points to get prizes or whatever it's probably not that many but yeah so I am deliberately trying to keep my works in progress down to a minimum. So I've got two at the moment. Uh, the first one I picked back up the other day is, you'll have to excuse the light. It's a bit dark now. It's, what was it, quarter to four? Oh, we've had a bit of a funny day. Uh, the car wouldn't start this morning. It's only uh, 18 months old. It's not a very old car at all. 
uh, and what had happened was it was cold and it didn't like the cold. And then when we, excuse the sniffling as well, um, we turned it, you know, it wouldn't start. So we turned it again and then eventually we flooded the engine. So we didn't know that we'd flooded the engine. Um, so we had to call the repair guy out. Luckily, all covered by our uh, car company. Uh, they have free year roadside assistance so when you buy a new car from them, which we did because 0% finance. Uh, so he came out and he fixed it and he told us what how to fix it next time if we do it. He said it's one of the most common things he gets called out for is uh, even the engine flooding, somebody losing their keys, the battery being dead or uh, a puncture because they don't provide you with a spare tyre in our model. You have a, one of those limper repair kit things. So, uh, and you know, free, free, free gears, roadside assistance, you call the guy out. So anyway, but the point was all of my um, things have been delayed today. All of the stuff I wanted to do by sort of lunchtime and then record haven't happened. They happened after lunch. So uh, it's sort of after one o'clock. So I'm fighting the light here. I've got, um, a lamp just behind me um it's not a daylight bulb it's an energy saving one so who knows if i actually showed you my knitting and stuff this would actually go quicker wouldn't it but never mind so here is uh it's uh, the knotty gloves uh, i can't remember who they buy but it's on my ravelry page i've just started the cabling section sort of like six or eight rows into the cabling section on this one um you might notice i have got uh, three strands here at the start whereas normally you only have one or yeah just 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 the one don't you yeah but basically what I did was I um, d yeah normally you just have the one I held the two yarns together one strand from the inside one stripe strand from the outside and did a long tail cast on so that my cuff is incredibly stretchy but that I didn't have to work out how much yarn I needed. Uh, so normally you have to sort of pull out an amount, think, ooh, about there, and then do your long tail cast on, and then find you sort of got four stitches too short, or you've got about a foot long extra tail that you didn't need. Doing it this way saves time. I will, uh, in January, try and record a couple of videos for you guys. I've had one request for uh, more crochet videos because I crochet with the yarn in my right hand like a knitter. So I will try and get that done. I'm getting a new camera in January. Uh, this is recorded uh, by my webcam, so not particularly practical. Uh, so anyway, so that's the um, the second one of those. The first one is uh, here. And it's a proper glove with fingers and everything. Um, it's, yeah, all done. Uh, the fingers fit me perfectly. I actually did uh, repeatedly try them on they've got a very long cuff on them which is lovely because you can pull the cuff right down and then sort of move your t-shirt over it or your hoodie over it would be better have your t-shirt under and then your hoodie over so you've not got any uh, chance of air getting your wrists uh, they're really nice it's sort of it's ribbed so far sort of up uh, the colours worked out quite well uh, they're showing up a bit sort of blown out on the screen uh i got a better picture on my ravelry page as always uh the yarn is lang yawal magic de grad uh and i think it's the sort of the autumn rainbow colorway is what i've been calling it this sort of purples and pinks and oranges and greens it's lovely um so yeah i'm really enjoying those these are my at home knitting now I am hopefully going to uh, finish this second one uh, sort of very, very shortly. Um, you can see I'm sort of uh, got a little bit to go and then I'm uh, putting the thumb in. And then once you once you sort of put the thumb in, you've not, um, it's not a huge amount. It's not a huge amount of knitting until you get to the, uh, to, till you get to the fingers. It's only about six, seven rows very quick uh very easy pattern cabled uh charted only on the cables which is fine for me i prefer charts for cables especially because um i knitted sylvie which is a cabled coat a heavily cabled coat and um that pattern taught me how to visualize 
where the cables are going and that's a really useful skill i think um rather than having to sort of rely on the charts all the time if you can visualize oh well my next stitch is a pearl and it's saying that i will have a, a knit there it's uh, hard to explain at the best of times and possibly impossible to explain with a cold so i will maybe do another tutorial on that in the new year if that would be of any help to anybody um coincidentally because it is december and a lot of people are doing the their podcast in front of their christmas trees i would love to do that my tree is up the actual physical tree is up my christmas tree skirt is underneath it but we haven't put any of the decorations on it yet um just mainly because we just haven't had the time uh the tree actually only went up this morning it's a fake one uh, so we managed to get sort of the branches on it this morning. Uh, we will try and get the remainder uh, of the stuff on this afternoon, uh, this evening probably through to. But I've not been feeling up to it. And, uh, you know, Reese is doing a valiant job, but it's mostly on his own blessing because I sort of stand up and exert myself for about 15, 20 minutes. And then that's it. I am done, 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 done. Um, so that's that anyway. Um again i am ants in my pants today Oop, cable caught these mics are good but the wireless ones are a fortune so uh not happening uh my second project is my car knitting um it is uh the very very easy tgv shawl again i cannot remember who it is but i upgrade updated all of my uh project pages yesterday and I have, of course, left it in the middle of a row. Uh, but it is a, yeah, and like right in the middle of a row. Sort of not even worth trying to knit it uh, and show you it at the same time, sort of a row. There we go. Took that stitch back into place. Uh, so it is essentially, it is a garter stitch. It's a paid for pattern, so I can't sort of say too much. But it is a garter uh, stitch crescent shaped shawl. And then you knit until the pattern tells you to stop, which is based upon a weight. And then you um, you change to knit to double the stitch count and then change to knit to pearl two ribbing. So it is an incredibly easy project. Uh, it lives in my handbag. I knit on it on the way to work, on the way home from work uh, and uh, lunchtime's in work if I'm not doing anything else. Uh, I will eat my food at my desk beforehand while I'm still on the clock and working and then I will just knit for 20 minutes. It's not a project I have uh, aspirations of being done with anytime soon. I would like to have it cast off before the first but that shouldn't be too hard. I think I need to get down to 75 grams of wool and I had 102. The yarn is uh, my hand spun. I don't know whether you guys remember me showing you this but it is i've called it neon barber poles because it is a one ply of new zealand corridale in the multicolors, and then the black ply is black welsh so i knew it was going to come up with sort of a mild color effect well, that's quite good actually that's not a bad sort of a, a color i knew it was going to come up mild it's coming up sort of stripy mild um i wasn't too sure on it to begin with but I now I quite like it. Uh, I'm using three and a half millimeter needles, and I determined what I wanted by using a uh, needle gauge. So the trick uh, from uh, it was Ask the Bellwether website, which is quite a good spinning resource. The tip that she gave was to hold your yarn double, and then to go across a knitting needle gauge. The one that the hole, when it covered the hole, that should be the recommended uh, sort of needle size. Uh, if you wanted it with a bit more drape, you would go up a needle size or two. If you wanted it uh, firmer, say for socks or something like that, you would go down a needle size or two. So that's a pretty good technique actually, uh, and I think I will use that a lot when it comes to handspun yarns. Uh, I don't think this will be my last TGV. Um, because it is uh, such a good pattern for uh, any weight of yarn. It is a paid for pattern, but that's fine. I don't mind every so often putting a bit of money in the pot to pay for. 
Uh, right, so that's it. That is literally all that I'm working on at the moment is these two things. I've got some things that are needle adjacent, but as I've said, uh, they're going to need to be uh, done after the other things are off the needles. So once the knotty gloves are done, I'm desperate to cast on a barbel hat. So that will happen after the knotty gloves are done. And then after the barbel hat, I want to cast on a maple leaf shawl for me. Though I'm not sure whether I will leave that until the new year. I've got to do my socks as well for the month of December. So uh, possibly knotty gloves, barbel hat, socks. Bush bash bosh, done. Um, I'm planning on taking my Zoom loom with me to... Um, to I haven't got... I thought I brought... Did I bring... No. I thought I brought a square that I've done with me, but obviously I haven't. Um, planning on taking my Zoom loom squares with me up to my mum's. We're going up on the 18th this year, which is really nice. It's uh, nice and early and sort of before Christmas. Sorry, that's a bit bright. Is it better if I move it behind me? Mm, not really. Uh, okay, right. It's going to have to live in the corner. Um, let's see if I can turn myself to block it. No. Okay. Um, we went up to my mum's, uh, mum and dad's, mum and dad's. You live with somebody who has parents who are divorced and you get really into the habit of saying um, your mum's. It's my mum and dad. My mum and dad are still together. They, uh, yeah, you know, uh, happily, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're going up to my parents this year for Christmas and we're going up early. This is the first year we've really been able to. Uh, this is the first year that um, Reese hasn't been working in retail because obviously in retail you get Christmas Day off and that is it. You are normally in first thing Boxing Day and it's easier to ask for leave in January than it is to ask for leave in December. Uh, last year he was in the civil service with me, which was great, but it was his parents' year. It was the year we were staying at home, so uh, you know we went up afterwards again, which was fine. But this year we can head up beforehand. So the uh, well, the 18th is our Christmas party. So the 19th, when we're uh, recovered and sober enough, we're heading up on the 19th. Uh, so, yeah, so what I was saying, I'm going to take my Zoom Loom box with me, my box of sock scraps for the Zoom Loom. So if I run out of things to do but don't have enough time to cast on something new that I know I will complete by the 31st, uh, then I will just weave Zoom Loom squares instead while I am there. I have enough sock yarn scraps to last me for about six weeks of just solid Zoom Loom weaving, full stop. I'm going to have other things to do. There's going to be family. There's going to be telly. There's going to be uh, games and things like that. Computer games. And uh, I think my dad's bought himself a PlayStation. Uh, or will be buying himself a new PlayStation. Uh, I'm taking the Wii U. My sister's bringing her 3DS. So, yeah, there's going to be more than enough time to actually do other bits. I may take a pair of socks to cast on for Christmas Eve. But uh, we'll see. Again, we'll see how I go. I will definitely need a new pair for January. Anyway. Uh, right, so finished objects. Um, I have a couple of things to show you. I will. Um, I haven't brought my sock blockers with me, so you'll have to bear with me. They're literally just down there, but they're being used to actually block socks that are drying. So uh, that's fine. Um, I finished off the uh, icon socks. Ooh, pardon me. Um, these are socks that are based off the icon pattern by. Uh, Cree Helene Rain, I think. They have a cable and then they have moss stitch on either side. That carries up the front. The back is two by two rib and plain stockinette on the foot. They have a fish lips kiss heel. Uh, and then I did eight rows of knit two pearl two rib just at the top, uh, continuing the rib up the back, obviously. Uh, so there is a pair of these. Two socks. Yay! These are it's upside down. These are for Reese uh, to wear uh, when I wear my dress. So uh, we're going to be obnoxiously matchy matchy. Uh, the pattern, as I say, I modified from the dress, but the rest of it was uh, to me, I think it was a. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. And I thought about having a nap, but then I thought my nose will run and I will choke and I will cough in my sleep. And uh, it's not, it's not good. Um, apologies, this probably sounds, oh, this sounds so lovely. Um, so yeah, so these are finished and these are going in the box for when we go to Canada. 
the yarn, I should say, is uh, Lincoln Longwall uh, from the Riceby Flock. It is their DK. That is now the last of it. There is a little bit left that is going into Zoom Loom Squares, but it is not a hot, huge amount. Uh, it is a DK, so I'm only using it as a single weight. It might be slightly lacier squares. Don't care. Uh, but yes, but this is the sort of the last I'm seeing of the cream, which is lovely because I'm sort of over cream a little bit. So these are now, now that they've been seen on the podcast, they're now going to go away in the box of things that we're taking to Canada with us. Uh, so my next finished is a very, very quick finished uh, and possibly won't show up particularly well. Um, but it is the uh, Gaia G-A-I-A -A shrug. And I want to say that the lady who uh, is... No, gone. Hang on. It's on Ravelry. Uh, oh, it's still up, actually. Uh, Project Gaia. G-A-I-A. -A. And it's Kayla Dykes. D-Y-C-H-E-S. Uh, basically, I've got a dress for the Christmas party. I can't see it. There we go. Uh, I've got a dress for the Christmas party. Uh, it fits. It's lovely. But it's a bit sort of low cut under the arms. Uh, so that's fine and it's sleeveless and I don't like the top of my arms much anyway I'm a bit better with them now that I've lost a bit of weight but uh, yeah it's still not fab so this is a shrug so squeeze myself into it actually does fit but it, it's one of those sort of little bolero -y things that just sort of sits it sits like that yep so it just sort of sits like that i mean obviously it looks a bit sort of stupid over the top of long sleeved but when i'm you know i haven't got any long sleeves on it looks quite nice uh just enough to just sort of cover up and uh it just sort of covers the back as well excuse my bum scooch down a bit yeah there we go glamorous um the yarn is uh rico creative cotton it is uh, black and it has uh, sort of the sparkle in it. Um, there is a you. Uh, there is a. It's a paid for pattern again, so I can't really give too much away. There is a detail around the edging, but I used a thinner yarn than called for. I used two strands of the Rico uh, Creative held together. Um, now I've got to work my way out of this because it's a. Uh, it's not ginormous. Ah, there we go. Um, it's good I don't have to do that at the party I can just do that at home where Reese can help me out and go oh my god why am I with you you're so you know such a fail boat um, but yeah it's um, it's um, double stranded uh, so it's a sport weight but it's a very thin sport weight uh, yarn so I held the two strands together I knitted uh, for the entirety this is the entirety of both skeins um if which is why it's a little bit on the sort of the tight side if i'd made it a little bit bigger then maybe maybe it would have fitted a bit better i had to sort of gather the sleeves slightly in order to fit them and still have a reasonable size sort of an armhole i know i have got quite large sort of upper arms but there's not a huge amount of bag uh, there's a bit of a bag but but when you get it on and it stretches it's not ginormous so yes nine millimeter needles i think this took me i cast it on uh on wednesday and i was done yesterday so and that's not with uh i had uh, didn't knit at all thursday or friday so nice and quick lovely it will go with my christmas party dress very nicely couldn't find anything in the shops long cardigans not a problem um a huge poncho-esque cascade waterfally jackets also not a problem stuff you would put on before you go out fine but actually finding a cardigan that i could wear indoors without melting from the heat was uh, a, a bit of a problem so uh yeah so oh well I'll, I'll knit one it's a bit mental but it's done so you know, you know there's not a huge um sort of about there oh sorry if I'm falling asleep, what are you guys doing? Um, I know, poorly. Um, right, drink. Oh, 
oh yes leaning back clanging behind me bum uh, remembered um and just a little tiny finished object um that i whipped up yesterday quite hard to see but it's a a, a, a glass ornament uh, that I bought last year at Christmas market but didn't do anything with and then a little bit of knitting on it with a little tiny intarsia sheep uh, the little knitting needles are in fact um, toothpicks with little beads on the end so uh, yeah he's gonna go hang up on my Christmas tree when I finally get it uh, hung uh, it's got a tiny bit of invisible um, thread which is then thoroughly spoiled by the blob of blue tack at the top holding it up but once it's on the tree i don't think you're ever going to notice it so uh yeah a lovely reflection of the remainder of my screen there as well for you guys um so i'm gonna pop that on here because it is um glass they said it was glass it um makes the ping like glass but it must be quite strong because I'm sure I've dropped it at least three or four times and it hasn't broken, so. Which is not me. Um, so my last um, finished object for today, um, because you know, one, two, three, four isn't enough, um, is, is this, this is huge one. Um, it'll be hard to show you guys the whole thing. Uh, so there are better pictures on my Ravelry page. It came out huge. I think it's 74 and a half inches across by something like nearly 40 deep, 32 deep. Again, the dimensions are on the size on my Ravelry page. So this is a shawl for Reese's sister for Christmas. Um, she likes red and yellow. Um, now that's coming up pink, but it's not. It is red and pink and yellow and a tiny splash of orange. The main body of the shawl is Den of Yarn Equity. Uh, it's a superwash merino, 80-20, uh, 18% merino, 20% nylon. The little bit of red down the edge is um, Drops Fable, uh, which is showing up incredibly strongly on here, but not so much in real life. And then the yellow is uh, Crolando Anchor, which is the oldie uh, sock yarn. I even mitered the point it is actually a pointy point these cables along here are cables of my own devising this her entire pattern is of my own devising but the body bit is simple it's just a plain triangular shawl uh, so the edging is uh, cables they are know, let me put them the right way up that way up uh, there is uh, dopamine uh, serotonin and beta endorphins so uh, these are like the chemical sort of the line symbols for them. But they just sort of look like fancy dancy cables. Um, uh, my sister, well, Reese's sister is, uh, I was going to say my sister-in-law, but we're not married. So, you know, but uh, she has just finished her degree in pharmacology, which is um, how chemists make things. Um, sorry, that's probably in my hair. You sorry 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 uh so that's how chemists make things um so uh yeah so how drugs are made and things like that so uh chemistry is a big big thing uh with her so i thought oh i hope that she'll like this it is ginormous it is big enough um if it was mine what i would be doing it took uh over 200 grams of yarn there was 100 grams in the edging alone 100 grams of the uh, anchor, uh, 100 grams of the uh, Crolando, 100 grams of the Den of Yarn Equity, and then I think it was 10 grams of the red edging. So what I would do is, uh, my favourite thing to do with shawls this big, is to do this, take the two ends, tie them round and under my back, and sort of whoop, have a sort of an impromptu cardi sort of a thing. I did think about doing this for the uh, for the Christmas party, but then I thought, oh, God, no, you haven't got time to knit. I mean, you know, uh, some people are so sort of narrow that they could do that with a 100 gram scarf, but not me. I need the full 200. Uh, this fits and this is quite comfy, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to get away with one sort of half the width, uh, half the width of this. So, uh, yeah, 
but that comes from you know sort of nice and down Kirsty is a lot narrower than me I'm quite broad I know this uh, so it, it fits lovely like that or uh, which this is going to cover my microphone so apologies and I won't uh, speak until I've got it off but uh, you could even in theory Uh, but again, that's huge. So it's up to her how she sort of wears it. Um, you know, it sort of definitely is a blanket style. Sure. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I think I use three millimetre needles as well. Three, three and a half, maybe. Project page. This is all on my project pages. I keep quite good project pages, reasonable project pages on Ravelry. And not everybody does, which is fine. But yeah, I really quite like this. And now that I have showed you guys, it can go and into my never-ending pile of Christmas wrapping. I haven't got a lot left to wrap, actually. I'm all bought up. Um... <sighs> Sorry, sneezing on the podcast would be just a step too far, probably. Um, I've got uh, nearly everything bought. I've just got to press the button on some stuff for Reese, but then I'm, so, I'm done. I've just got my one friend to buy for, so... We're all good. I bought for her puppy. I bought for her dog. Not for not for the friend though yet. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so that's off into my pile to be wrapped. Yay! Uh, so that's it for finished objects. Uh, so I wish I could pause this. Can I pause this? Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Stop recording. Uh, image. Nope. Ah, pause. Streaming, but I'm not streaming, but never mind. Gets rid of that thing in the middle. Um, okay, so, uh, I really don't want to have to sort of piece these two bits together. So, yeah, uh, let's carry on. Um... Okay, so, welcome back. The nose has been blown. The, um, yeah, the nose has been blown. And the, uh, yeah, cough has been coughed. So, uh, yeah, I'm back um, for the last section. Um, ooh, shiny, which is things I've bought. I've bought a lot of stuff over the last few weeks. I'm going to move you in a bit closer. Whee! In you come, just so you can see all of the lovely things. Um, so I'll start off with something that I have been bought. My lovely friend brought me this back from Euro Disney. Because I know a lot of litters are Disney fans as well. So it's Thumper. And he's going to go. And he's got a little golden Mickey and a little star. So he's going to go hang on the tree today. I might put him up directly after I podcast. Uh, after I finish rec recording even. Joyu, Joyu, Joyu Noel. It says on the thing, Merry Christmas, Joyu Noel. Because it's... Uh, Price is still on it. Whoops. Oh, well. Um, because it's from um, Disney. She went to Euro Disney uh, a week or so ago. So, yeah, that's awesome. She's really lovely for thinking of me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I said, um, she asked me what my favourite Disney film was. And I said Lion King, but they didn't have any Lion King ones. But just because Lion King isn't really Christmassy. So, uh, that aside, I love their Christmas ornaments. I wish I could get, you know, more. We tend to buy one sort of special one each year. So, uh uh, we've already got one this year. We've got a little mousey, so that was nice when we went to Gloucester. Um, I still haven't recorded since. My other non, uh, well, my other non crafty thing is uh, just picked up today, uh, which is these from Aldi. Uh, vol vol uh, votive candles, and there's uh, six in the pack, and they were three ninety nine. So really happy with these. The flavours or the scents, I suppose, really. Uh, a gingerbread. Uh, frosted spruce. Let me see if I can open them. Oops, I've just torn the packaging. Oh uh, well, they're going to be used anyway. Wee, out they come. Uh, so you've got gingerbread. And that looks very, very similar actually to the packaging for the um, uh, Yankee Candle ones. Yankee Candle ones. I don't know why I'm sniffing these. I haven't really got any sense of smell, but uh, frosted spruce.
spiced orange. Ooh, that one smells nice. Toasted marshmallows. Oh, they're going to make me sneeze again. Um, velvet rose. <coughs> oh, bless me. <coughs> oh. Oh, we're good. We're good. Oh, and uh, vanilla. Sorry. Uh, I'll maybe edit that out. I hope I'll edit that out. Oh. This is horrid. This is the worst bit of a cold. I don't feel awful. I don't feel that tired, but I just feel snottery, you know? Uh, but it is what it is. So I thought I'd share those in case anybody in the UK was looking for a Christmas present for anybody or in case uh, they wanted to sort of treat themselves, because a set like this would possibly cost you about 12 to £14 pound in Yankee Candle. Uh, and, you know, candles are candles, and they mostly... I think Yankees are lovely, but they are quite expensive for what they are. So, anyway, on to crafty, actual crafty stuff that I bought. Oops, what was that I dropped off? Something. Oh, uh, well, I will find it later. Um, so crafty stuff I actually bought this last week. Uh, I bought one of these, which is a colour and tone guide. This I got from Hobbycraft. Uh, so you have got a, that's your tonal estimator. It is for quilters mainly, I think, is the marketing aim at it. Because the uh, actual, I haven't actually opened this yet because I was waiting to show you guys. Uh, I, crinkle, crinkle. I bought the Craftsy class uh, with Franklin Habit when it was on sale, which is the colour one, because Franklin is amazing, and, uh, you know, it's good, uh, but he said, all oh, print off the colour wheel. I haven't got a working printer, and I can only steal works printer for so much. I wish, right, we could have a fund with Petty Cash where you pay so much for your own personal printing and just do it, because I would use the hell out of that, but we don't, so... Uh, Anyway, so you, you pick your point and you click. So say, I, uh, say I'm say i not sure where a colour goes. Oh. I've got this, which is duck egg blue. I know it's duck egg blue. But I sort of, I lay, I can lay my uh, thing on there. So they're all a bit dark, but that's, that's too green. That's too, definitely too dark. Possibly yeah because that's a bit so so in there would be better f is possibly the best one in there uh, which is uh, f just there so what i can then do is i can then point it at f or at the line containing f and it goes across and it tells me what the complementary color is so the complementary color for f would probably be because i think you'll move up as well would probably be uh oh yeah because they're lettered the same. So it would probably be F on that side there. The uh, You can find, if I move that there, the split complementaries would be the purple and the, uh, would be the purple and would be the uh, orange. So it's a really useful tool to sort of to have, I think, for colour sense. And I'm definitely going to use it when I go through the Franklin course. Uh, I don't know whether you can download from Craftsy, uh, which I really hope you can, because that would be incredibly useful, uh, because I don't have internet connection at my mother's, it's, um, which is another reason that I'm not possibly going to upload again before Christmas. I might do a quick run round of the Christmas decks, uh, but I am not going to do an actual full podcast uh, again before Christmas, um, just for the simple reason of um, I don't have the time. Uh, and uh, I do have the time while I'm at my mother's, but I don't have the internet speed to upload things. Um, so they're on uh, the very end of the exchange in a very rural village. So uh, 5.12 is normally the internet speed. Which, for those of you who remember the good old days of dial-up, is slightly faster. Slightly. But then you have, you know, sort of like me on it and Reese on it and my mum trying to do something for school, uh, you know, for a homework or for work at home that she has to do over the holidays, uh, you, 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 you've gone. You don't have uh, a chance. So I try and avoid internetting and do crafting instead. 
so I might see if I can download the colour class but I thought that was good I, I don't think it was very expensive a couple of quid but uh, there are full instructions on the back if you actually read them because reading is good uh, okay so the next thing I want to show you guys is uh, the Stylecraft pack now I ordered this in from my not so local local yarn shop uh, which is in Gloucester where I used to live um so this is the kit Ta -da! it's 50 gram balls of starcraft special which is a bit unique because uh, they don't normally do them in these sizes it's 100 grams all of these colors were chosen by a panel can i remember what the uh color names are now but you could send in things you wanted and uh get the uh, get it made into a yarn so i know the yellow is mustard that's an easy one and i know the blue is duck egg there is an empire blue somewhere that one possibly the dark one uh, uh lobelia is the purple uh aspen there's an aspen which is maybe uh this one there's a kelly green which is maybe this one and that one's grass i think uh but they've only got the shade numbers on them they haven't actually got the names on them but i have uploaded them all individually into ravelry so I thought uh, I wanted to buy the pack because I didn't think that these colours were coming out. But they are. They're available now uh, as 100 gram balls as well. So uh, I, if I run short, I'm going to make a blanket. Um, so there's, you know, 100, uh, 200, 300, 400, 500 grams here. I'm going to use the, uh, I thought about using white for the edging, but I'm not. I bought two balls of the duck egg blue. Uh, which they did release in 100 gram balls this was going to be the permanent addition to the range there was a competition they shortlisted 12 there was going to be one winner which was this and this was the one that was going to be produced but they found that uh, the demand was so high for the limited edition pack which was 20 pound was not very expensive at all that they've made them all into individually into uh, 100 gram balls available so if I find I don't have enough to do what I want to do, then I can always buy 100 gram balls of each one just to make up the pattern. So I'm going to do a star blanket with these. This is going to be the outside and the joining. And then the stars are going to be in each of the colours within this pack, excluding, obviously excluding the duck egg, because otherwise you won't see it. So uh, nine different colours. And then the tenth one makes the edging. So that's that. Oh, the rest I've got in a millions carrier bag I got from Tesco's not so long ago. Because uh, I did, I have bought quite a lot actually lately. Um, the stuff I said I wouldn't. Um, I got this because, whether you can tell, but sparkly. This is opal and it's called uh, Mit Gelb, Gilb Effect. So I know gelb is gold, so gilb effect must be with, with, with gold effect, or with sparkles. Uh, it's called Opal Happy, I think, on the website. Uh, yeah, Opal Happy Mid Silver Effect. Surprise is the colourway. Colourway 9091. So, yeah, this is going to be a pair of socks for me. Uh, they're going to just be plain socks. I don't, It might even come and be my Christmas Eve cast on. I've got lots of sock yarn I'd like to use, but you know I, I might as well just use the stuff I, i'm getting as well uh, rather than leave it languishing uh, they're very festive aren't they so uh that might be might very well be my christmas cast on my christmas eve socks uh so i got the one ball of that um whoops knocking my lamp over um next i went we've got a, a new shopping center in town um uh and we have got a tiger in there tiger is uh it's hard to describe for people who don't have one but it's sort of um if you've ever been to ikea the middle bit of ikea that is filled with all of that useless tat you never knew you needed until you saw it and it's only a pound and you're like i cannot live without that hedgehog shaped utensil holder um so every so often my friend angie who lives in Cheltenham, uh, would tell me that um, she'd got some sock yarn in there or she told me once she got some sock yarn in there so every time I've been on the hunt, they do cheap knitting needles, they do cheap DPNs, actually. Uh, but I've never managed to find sock yarn until now. So I got uh, this one. It's called uh, Strompagarn. 
um, but it's, yeah, then it says sock yarn. They're 50 gram balls. Uh, it actually 170 meters per ball. So uh, they use two to two point five US size ones. They recommend. Um, there isn't actually a uh, colour number on there. There's just a batch number. So well, they're inventively listed in Ravelry by what they're called. So this one is uh, what they put. This one is grey fuchsia and camel. So I got uh, two of all of these. Obviously, I got two. Uh, so that's that one. I'm gonna have to throw them on the floor. I've got so many. Um, Fuchsia. That's showing a bit darker than it is, but it is actually a really pinky pink. Fuchsia, that's showing it's purple. Fuchsia. The light has sort of well and truly gone now. That's the other fuchsia. Uh, right, where are you? I know I've got more than you. Yes, there you are. There's one. This one, which is listed in Ravelry, is navy, light blue and... Uh, khaki or green and then this one which is just navy so these were a pound a ball so a pair of socks for two pound you cannot object at that i wish the colors were a bit um, better a bit less limited but i will take what i can uh, what i'm given um so the next thing uh, was um knit picks now, for years, Knit Picks has not shipped to the UK for anybody who is a, a foreign viewer. We have been able to get their needles under the guise of Knit Pro for a while. Um, though some people uh, reckon that Knit Pro and Knit Picks are a different company, but whether it's the manufacturer of the needles, but anyway. Um, so we've been able to get the same sort of needles, the symphonies at the very least, uh, the carbons, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. Um, but we haven't been able to get the yarn. There's been a couple of selected UK importers, but one UK importer, but not a lot. But recently, we now ship to the UK. Okay. So I go and I have a look when they do. And to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed. Back when I first started knitting, they were unanimous, especially online. Unanimous, not unanimous, ubiquitous. They were big anyway online, especially with the people in America, because they provided uh, affordable, real materials, natural materials, I should say. Sorry, if I don't make sense, just ignore me because it's the cold. In January, I will probably be better and make more sense. I hope. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I was really excited and then I got a bit disappointed because uh, in recent years especially, the availability of yarns like drops has become a lot more available uh, to us in the UK uh, through Wool Warehouse, through things like that. So drops is amazing and is 100% uh, natural materials and it's cheap as chips. How they produce it, they must, I don't know. But uh, yeah, whether it's particularly good or not is another question. But for bigger items like uh, coats, jumpers, uh, blankets, that sort of a thing. It's definitely an affordable option, uh, like Knit Picks is for those in America. Uh, so yeah, so I wasn't too sort of enamoured, but then they uh, released their big sale. So they had two yarns in this sale that they don't have for the rest of the year that are unique, uniquely manufactured for them. Uh, so the first one was uh, Hawthorne Fingering in the Speckle colourways. Uh, apparently you can get Hawthorne Fingering in... Um, through the rest of the year, this is confetti speckle. So it is uh, sort of uh, speckles of blue, confetti, yeah, confetti speckle, uh, blue, pink, a uh, bit of red in there as well. So uh, this is an 80% super fine highland wool, 20% polyamide, 375 yards to 100 grams. Machine wash, gentle, tumble dry, low. So I'm not entirely sure what that's going to be, but I really like the speckle yarns. I've not worked with the speckle yarns yet, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I also got the, um, I couldn't decide between that and the Aquatic Sparkle, so I bought both. So this is a, sort of a light blue base with dark and blue speckles on it. Again, same base, Hawthorne fingering weight, 80-20 uh, wool and polyamide. So this could even be socks, could even be socks. 
Uh, so then the other big thing which nitpicks are famous for is their filici, which is their sock yarn. So uh, they have limited colorways, uh, especially ones that are popular, which is uh, this one. I got two balls of each. This is their Time Traveller colorway. So uh, it is the colours of the Doctor Who scarf. So it's a self-striping, it's quite wide self-striping and it's lovely, it's really nice. I've knitted a pair of socks, one of which has gone walkabouts. I did knee length socks and one has disappeared. So I have absolutely no idea where it is, but uh, it'll turn up as soon as I make myself another pair of socks out of this. But I couldn't resist because I loved the socks. I wore them twice and it disappeared. So I got two sets of that. Uh, I got um, two balls of this, which is the rainbow colourway. Uh, and I got uh, two of this one, which is the Baker Street, uh, the Sherlock colourway. So, yeah, I really like these. Uh, nitpicks, it was, uh, I didn't have any problems checking out like certain people did. Uh, I There was one I liked, I put in my basket and then when I went back to it, because I was sort of, I'm in an iron because I don't really need more yarn. Uh, it had gone, so that, but that was my fault entirely. I hadn't ordered it and then it disappeared like some people had. So uh, postage was incredibly quick. It took about a week to get here. And that is from the States. They ship from the States still. They don't ship. They don't have a warehouse within the UK, which is fine. Uh, but they ship from the States. But you don't pay any customs fees. They are a big enough company to swallow any and all customs fees. Uh, orders over £40, you get free delivery as well. So that's always a bonus. So yeah, I'm really happy with these. <coughs> Even though I don't need any more sock yarn, you know, it's uh, always, always sort of nice to have. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to show you guys was the green colour of the Let Lopey arrived as well. Uh, so now I have... All of the colours in order to start my barbel hat. As and when I finish the knotty gloves. Um, so that's sort of it. There, uh, I, I should have said, but there wasn't any spinning this week. Uh, I haven't done any. I haven't even put the bobbin back on my wheel from when I talked to you guys last. So it's been three weeks and no spinning. Um, uh, I spoke to my mum the other day and she's got citric acid in her house. Uh, so I'm going to take my socks with me my uh, rainbow socks and a pair of sock blockers and uh, um, set the acid with uh, set it with the um, citric acid uh, so that the color doesn't leak out of them like people have said so that'll be awesome uh, i am uh yeah uh sort of a weekend reviewy thing as i've said to you it's been quite quiet had a christmas party which was lovely uh, the food was good, the uh, oh, the poor waitress was running around all on her own, but once that got sort of ironed out, it was all okay. Um, bless her, she really, they tried their hardest for us. Uh, we had free garlic bread and they paid for a round of drinks for us because they cocked up one of the food orders. We'd special ordered, I'd rung, uh, I organised it. Uh, I'd rung in to ask if they could do it first of all. I'd written it on the menu. I'd said, any, please ring me if you have any questions at all. They hadn't transferred it over. I should have checked when I went in at the start, to be honest. But I didn't. I forgot. So, but anyway, it all got sorted. We got free drinks and we got some free garlic bread. So we couldn't complain. It was two courses for a tenner. So, it, you know, we all gave her a quid tip. So she got a nice tip out of us, £12 tip. So bless her, she'd earned every single penny of it though. So, uh yeah um that was that i told you about the car which was silly today uh which the diet lady went to go get a bits a couple of bits from the range um i'll mention it again when i do my christmas decorations recordings but um i had a rattan sort of a style rattan style tree and i love this tree it sits on top of my telly unit the lights on it blew last year though and i couldn't think i uh, i wanted to replace it with something we'd left it it got put in the corner and it got forgotten about it hadn't got uh, taken to the tip or anything like that because it was electrical uh, so we couldn't just go in the bin so uh luckily we hadn't though because i was looking around i've been looking for weeks ever since the decorations have come out in the shops really for something to replace it with and not found anything so uh the other day i had the thought well whew, uh the lights are only just tie wrapped onto the tree so i've cut them off and I bought a pack of LED battery-operated lights. 
uh, I can uh, just look it up and I can see them now in the corner of my eye. Bought a pack of uh, little LED battery operated lights and I've just wrapped those around the tree and it looks almost as good. Uh, you know, the other ones were a little bit more hidden because they were inside, but I'm not going to that sort of level of faff. So for like six quid, I've actually re uh, repaired it rather than having to replace it. So that's always good, right? Because I just wanted the exact same thing over again. That was what I was really set my heart on finding. And there wasn't anything like that this year. Couldn't find anything similar. I thought I was going to have to go for a candelabra. Uh, which is nice, don't get me wrong. But I like a good candelabra. But they're more of a window thing, aren't they? Than a, uh, like a... I don't know. I had it in my head what I wanted. Of course I did. I always do. So, yeah. So that's that. Um, apart from that, I haven't really got a lot else to tell you. Um... I'm uh, going to try and get my knitting sorted out for Christmas, uh, what I want to take with me, what I need to get printed off before I go, because downloading patterns and stuff will be a bit tricky while I'm there. Uh, I've got to go get the rest of the tree decorated. Uh, let Paul Reese come down from upstairs, bless him, he's uh, sequestered himself upstairs while I podcasted. Again, I really apologise for the quality of today's, but I just wanted to get the stuff sort of shown to you guys before I... Uh, you know, before I uh, sort of continued, because otherwise, probably won't record next week. Or if I do, it will be a short one, camera operated. So uh, I will record on my actual camera, not on my uh, phone, uh, in the daylight, because it now is it now is pitch black out there. Uh, I will record on my actual camera, <sighs> and I will uh, show you the tree and the decorations and. Uh, Show you guys Isla's cage, because I don't think you've seen Isla's massive cage. Um, but yeah, just do a little bit of a tour of the house, tidy up, and then do a little bit of a tour of the house. Um, so yeah, uh, but it, it, you won't probably see me on it, because I will be, you know, holding the camera and filming. Anyway, um, happy knitting. Uh, I hope you are all not suffering from colds. I hope you are all very well and managing to avoid the Christmas lurgy. Uh, I hope that work is treating you well. I hope that you're having, if you're working, you're having a nice, quiet, run up till Christmas until you get off from uh, work. And I'm hoping that you uh, have a wonderful time with your families. I will hopefully see you guys next week. But if I don't, it will probably be the first weekend in January, uh, which is scary. 2016. I mean, you know, come on, really. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, if you're celebrating Christmas, I hope you have a, a very Merry Christmas uh, or anything else that you're celebrating. I think Hanukkah's around then this year. It's sort of very, uh, it's normally Christmas, similar time to Christmas, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I hope you have a very happy festive season and I hope you spend uh, a lot of time with your family and get to spend a lot of time crafting and doing things that you love. Thank you ever so much for listening to me ramble. Love you all. Bye bye. <laughs>